The first divide and conquer sword that we want to talk about is the merge sword. And the concept of the merge sword is fairly simple. It's going to break a list in half, and we're going to sort this on a list, on a list, not an array, uh, partially because it, the logic is, is simpler. It's a little bit easier to implement using a list. We'll come back uh, in a later treatment of recursion and recursive sorts and do a more efficient version that will work with arrays. But this version is going to work with lists. The idea is you break it in half, and then you sort each of the two sides recursively. And then you're going to put together the results in a merge operation. And the merge operation is fast because the two parts are already sorted. So, let's go ahead and let's write a merge sort. We'll start off writing our merge sort function. And it's going to take a list of double and return a list of double. Because the list is immutable, we have to build a new one and return it. And we're going to write this with a match. So we're going to do a match on this. So what are some of our cases? Well, one case. The list is nil. Well, an empty list is already sorted, so we're just going to give back that same list. Similarly, what if it's not nil but only has one item in it? Well, that would be a head const onto a nil. A list of only one element is also sorted. So we return that. In any other case, what we need to do is we need to break this list into two pieces, hopefully equal pieces, and then sort each of those two halves and merge them together. So the first thing we need to do is break it apart. And we're going to break it into two pieces. We'll call them L1 and L2. And we can do this simply with the split at. Now, this is not the most efficient way to do this because in order for this to work, we have to call length. Turns out length on a list has to walk the whole length to find the, uh, the has to walk the whole list to find it. The split at has to walk the whole list. You can make a more efficient version that will alternately take the first and second elements um, and build a list. Instead of being the first half of the list and the second half of the list, it's all the things that even indexes and all the things that odd indexes. But this works well for us because it's easy for us to express. And the result is simply, I want to do a merge on, what happens if I call merge sort on L1 and merge sort of L2. We haven't written our merge yet, we'll do that next. But as we talked about before, we're writing merge sort and we're assuming that it works. Okay, we're going to call merge sort, basically believing that merge sort is going to work. And it turns out that by doing that, we make it so it does work. So let's go write our merge. What does merge look like? Well, merge takes two different lists and both of these have to be sorted for this to be meaningful. So we'll call them L1 and L2. And it returns a list of double, just like the two inputs. To make this work, we're going to do another match. So we're going to match on L1 and L2 here. And we'll start with our base cases. Well, what if L1 is nil? Well, if L1 is nil, it doesn't matter what L2 is because the result is going to be L2. I have an empty list and a non-empty list and I want to merge them together. The result is the non-empty list. Similarly, if I have anything for the first list and a nil list for the second list, I give back the first list. The more interesting case is when they're both not nil. So in this case, we have at least one element on each one. So I'm going to call the first list h1 cons t1 and the second list h2 cons t2. And what needs to happen here? Well, it depends upon whether h1 or h2 is less. We're going to take the smaller of them and we're going to add it to the front of a list. So we could say if h1 is less than h2, 
then we get H1 cons. The result of doing a merge on, well, we've already pulled off the H1, so T1 and the full list L2. We could also say H2 cons T2, but L2 is just a faster way for us to do this. Else, well, if H1 is not smaller, then we want to take H2 and merge and cons it on to the beginning of merging the entire first list and the tail of the second list. Okay, so we have a merge sort written. Let's test it out. Note that we could have made this merge a function inside of merge sort if we wanted, though merge is potentially a useful function in other situations. Load this in, see how many typos we have. Apparently none. And we can call merge sort on a list dot fill. And I'm just going to make 10 random values. Point one three, point two, four nine, five six, five seven, six two, six four, seven one, seven seven, nine six. Those look sorted. Those look sorted too. Okay, so this is a merge sort. Um, it turns out that while the real advantage of merge sort is when the data gets large, this particular version of merge sort can't do large uh, lists. And the reason is because this merge here is not tail recursive. So in order to, if you start merging really long lists, this has to call itself once for every element in the combined length of the two lists, which won't work for anything with more than about 10,000 elements in it. So if we want this to work with large lists, we'll have to write something that is, that is tail recursive or that is more imperative. This is a pretty functional merge, but it's not going to work with large data sets. We'll come back in the next video, we'll fix that, and then we'll talk about what order this merge sort actually is.